Hi, thank you for watching a Finance with Excel video. In this video, we're going to use historical data um, from the uh, S&P 500, and we're going to calculate um, the average monthly and yearly stock returns on the stock market from uh, starting from 1950 to the present to 1980 to the present and um, so forth. Um, to calculate this, we're, we're going to calculate the real stock market returns, which means the stock market returns after you back out inflation. So in order to do this, we need to have both inflation data and S&P 500 data. So to get inflation data, I just googled historical CPI, which is the Consumer Price Index. And this very top link, which is just in, from inflationdata.com, if I click on it, it brings me to this website and I can go down here and I can just highlight this entire uh, workbook because this gives us the CPI for each year and month up until February 2017 which is uh, I'm doing this workbook right now in uh, April 2017 um, so they don't have March or April up yet but this goes up to February 2017 and that gives me CPI data so I just copy this data and I pasted it here on this tab named CPI now the only difference that I've changed I've made is instead of the columns being um, January, February, etc. They are one, two, three, four, five for each of the twelve months, and we'll, uh, it'll make sense why I do that. Next thing I need is I need uh, data on the value of the S and P five hundred. Now, for that, I just go to Yahoo Finance and I type in S and P five hundred, and um, and uh, this right here. This index right here is the S&P 500 index. <clears throat> and now what we want to look at is we want to look at um, get historical data. And then you just go here and you click max and you say we want monthly data and then you click apply. And then, um, and then it'll give you from January 1950 all the way to the present. Then you just click download the data and it gives it to you. It gives you um, this data which I have just put right here. Now to make things simple, I need to put this CPI data into this, um, you know, I just want to combine these two data sets where uh, I just have a column right here that says CPI. So now I've got, and I don't actually need, the only one I actually want is I'm just going to use the closing value, which means what was the value of the, um, of the S&P 500 at the end of the trading day. And uh, this gives you that um, number. And we don't want adjusted close. We just need the close. I'm just going to label this S&P 500. And then we just want to get the uh, the CPI from here. Now to do this, I'm actually going I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to do uh, first. I'm going to do a year, month, and uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a lookup command. That it, what it's going to do is it's going to look up the year in this table. So to look up you know 1995 or whatnot, and then it's and then in the column in the view lookup, it's just going to be whatever the month is from this date right here plus one. So if the month in so that'll pull from column two. And I'll I'll just show you how that does. So the year, we're going to use the year function, and then for the month, we're going to use the month function. And then this puts them in date format, and we want them to be in general format. And so then we can drag uh, all these numbers down. You notice I did a third column here, and that'll make um, that'll make sense in just a second. So what I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, but first I'm going to go ahead and pull the VLOOK or the uh, I'm going to pull the S&P 500 values or the CPI values. So I'm going to use the VLOOKUP command, and the lookup values I'm going to look up year. And I'm going to look up year in this table right here. Ooh. There we go. And then I'm going to anchor on that. And then the next thing that the lookup command asks is for which column? Well, the column that I want is whatever the month is um, plus one. Because if the month is uh, April, then I want it, uh, and I'm going to say, and then lastly, just put false. And the reason why I do that is because uh, for, the, for the month is if the month is April, which is the fourth month, then what I'm going to put is, uh, uh, if the month is April, then I want from the column, I want, when I come back over here, I want column uh, five, 
which is column 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so that would give me April of whatever the particular year is. So if we now look at the S&P 500, now if we do the CPI, and we do this down, we notice we don't have the CPI for um, uh, uh, March or April, which we knew. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and actually get rid of those two observations. And... Uh, now we have the S&P 500 and uh, the CPI, and so we can we can see uh, how the S&P 500 and the CPI have have uh, changed over time. Um, but the next thing we want to do is we want to calculate the average um, the average uh, percent change in um, in the CPI. So to do this, I'm going to need to do a little algebra, and uh, to show you this, I'm just going to go ahead and pull up a Microsoft Word document. Okay, so this is the basic formula that we're working with, and th for uh, that we can use to to calculate how um, what's the average rate of return that you that you would earn um, if uh, to in order to get from your current or from your past price, which is PP, to your current price, which is CP. So if the current value, for example, of the S and P five hundred is uh, twenty three sixty three, and the price in nineteen fifty was seventeen. Um, the question that we're trying to an uh, answer is, um, so if you had 2300 right here and you had uh, 17 right here, what is the rate of return, the monthly rate of return, <coughs> excuse me, that would get you from, uh, from a value of 17 in 1950 to uh, 2300 in, um, in 2017. Uh, and so the way we calculate that is we just take uh, the price multiplied by, or the, the, the past price, which would be 17, multiplied by 1 plus the rate of return that you get, raised to the T, which is the number of months between, um, which is the number of months between the, uh, the, the, the time, the past price and the current price. Uh, or if you're doing years, it would be the number of years between the, the past value and the current value. So we're just going to do a little bit of algebra. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this, um, the, the past price over to the left-hand side because we want to solve for this uh, return right here. So we divide both sides by the present or the past price, which leaves us with this. Uh, and then um, we now have this problem where we have this, uh, this expression is raised to the exponent of t. Well, if we uh, think back to our... Um, algebra classes that we may have had a long time ago. Um, the log of any th of x raised to the y is equal to y times the log of x. So the log of 1 plus r raised to the t is simply t times the natural log of 1 plus r. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So we take the natural log of the ratio of the current price to the past price, uh, and then we take the natural log of um, 1 plus r raised to the t, and the t comes out in front, and you just get the natural log of 1 plus r. So now we can move the t over to the other side. So now we have the, the ratio, this here, multiplied divided by t. Now we need to get rid of the natural log on this right-hand side. And going back to our algebra classes, the, uh, the, if, you, um, take, if you raise the e raised to the log of anything, is just equal to whatever that is. So e raised to the log of 1 plus r is simply equal to 1 plus r. So we're going to take both sides, raise both sides to the exponent. Um, uh, we're going to e raised to both sides. So we have the x. E, uh, we're going to exponentiate the law, the ln of cp divided by pp over t, and then that's just going to equal one plus r because it get, effectively gets rid of the natural log. Now all we have to do is get rid of this one, move it to the other side. So we have this expression right here, which will give us the the average rate or the rate of return that we would need each month in order to get from our past price to our current price is equal to this expression right here. So, so what we need to do now is we want to create a table that where we can just put like uh, where we can put year and then month, and it will give us the value of the S and P five hundred, and or it will give us the CPI. Now, uh, so let's say the first one is we just want the most recent one. So we're going to go 2017 and we're going to go February. And so we want the value of the S&P 500. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do lookup date. And this lookup date is just going to be simply, it's, I'm just going to fix the first day or the day of, e of this lookup date to be equal to the first day of the month. Now we can't use this date here because the first trading day of the month is not always the first day of the month. And we're just going to do a lookup that basically converts this into a date and then finds the appropriate value for the S&P 500 or the CPI. So I'm going to do date 
and then year is going to be year, and then month is going to be month, and day is going to equal to one. So then this gives us a lookup date. So now I'm going to use a VLOOKUP command, and I'm going to do uh, the lookup value is going to be date. We're going to create a date, and we want the year to be the year, we want the month to be the month, and we want the day to be equal to one. And then that's going to convert that to a day, and it's going to say, well, where do you want to look this up? And then we just want it to be in this table. And then in this case, we want it to be two, uh, so we want it to pull back the S&P 500, and uh, we want it to say false. So this gives us this returned like we wanted it to, the value of the S&P 500. So now um, the last thing that we need to do is I'm going to anchor this on the column, and then I'm going to drag this formula over, and then change this to be column three. So now this gives me the most recent value for the S&P 500 and the CPI. So we can then put back any any values that we want to put in. So I'm going to put in 2010, and then we'll go with January, and then I'm going to go uh, put in um, 2000, and I'm going to put in uh, January, and I'm going to put in 1980 January and 1950 January. And so then if we drag this formula down, it will give us the value of both the CPI and the S&P 500 uh, for each of these years and months. Now, we need to calculate the, um, the average. So the next thing we need to do is we need to calculate the, uh, um, the average increase in percent terms, the average monthly percent increase in the S&P 500 and the monthly percent increase in the CPI. So, uh, so um, average monthly S&P, and then average monthly, um, oh actually we're going to do one thing first, we're going to do number of periods. And so what this is, uh, what this is going to calculate is this is going to calculate the number of months um, between the uh, between the most recent time period and whatever the time period that we have uh, right here is. So we're just going to simply use a formula here. We're going to go date and um, we're, this, is gonna, this is not going to be perfect, um, but it's, it's kind of a simple way that'll, to do it that'll keep us within uh, a, a few hundredths of what the actual number will be. So year and then we're going to go month and then we're gonna go day is uh, one, and then um, that'll give us the date uh, right here, and then um, what we wanna do is we wanna do minus this most recent time period. So date, and then year, but I'm gonna anchor this one, and then month, and then I'm gonna anchor this, and then day is gonna be equal to one. Now this gives us the number of, so if we drag this formula down, it will tell us the number of days uh, between um, this day and, uh, oh actually, I, I anchored the wrong ones. I need to anchor these and not anchor those. There we go and drag them down. It's just going to change the number. So this tells us the number of days between this time period and this, uh, between whatever this day is and, and this time period right here. So we need to convert that into months. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this by the average number of months in a year. And so that is going to be 365 divided by 12. And so that's obviously zero. And so then we can see this is not perfect, but it gets us within a couple of hundredths of what the actual number is going to be. And it's going to be close enough for, uh, and in some ways it's actually more precise. Um, so number of months uh, between the two. Okay, so now from here we want to calculate the average return, uh, aver uh, a S and P return, and so we just need to use this formula that we've found right here. We just need to plug that into Excel. So we need to go exp of the ln of the ratio of. Uh, well, I'm actually just going to skip this one. I'm going to go exp of the ln of the ratio of um, the current price, and I'm going to anchor on that, divided by the past price, um, divided by the number of time periods, 
minus 1. And then I'm going to drag that down. And, uh, and then um, I'm actually going to change this anchor to where this is only column anchored. There we go. And then I'm going to drag it down. And then I can actually, um, sorry, I, I mis-anchored that. I'm just going to go ahead and hard anchor it, and then I'll, I'll show you what I'll do. Okay, then we can drag that. Now we can drag this over, and um, now it's obviously messing everything up. We just need to drag the CPI over here. So now this is giving us the same number for the CPI. Except that we needed to move, keep the time, uh, the number of time periods over here. Okay, so now if we convert these, so this is the uh, average monthly uh, CPI. And then let's convert these to percentages. Uh, and uh, we want a little bit more, a little higher than that. Okay, and so then we need, let's do average yearly. Average yearly. Um, Uh, SMP and then average yearly CPI and so that's gonna be the exact same formula as this so we could actually we could just drag this formula over real quick but we want this to be on the S&P 500 again uh, and then um, the number of periods be right here but for the number of periods, instead of months, we want this divided by 12 because that will give us the number of, um, that will give us the yearly return. And uh, so let's drag this over. So now let's just fix everything. Uh, we, we want this on CPI. Oops. Okay. So now we can calculate, and then I'm just going to make these a little bit prettier. I'm going to... Uh, highlight the cells, these cells with a few different colors. Okay, so now we can see that, that uh, from um, 2010 to 2017, the average yearly return on the S&P 500 has been almost 12%, whereas the average yearly uh, CPI has been 1.6% uh, over that same time period. And we can look at the same thing. So now we can calculate the average year, average real return uh, Uh, average monthly year real return and the average yearly re real return. So this is so that, that's just going to equal um, that minus the uh, or, um, sorry, it's going to equal. So the average monthly return is going to equal whatever the S and P's is minus CPI and. The average yearly is going to equal that minus um, CPI. And so we've got a decent estimator um, for, uh, and so this gives us kind of looking over past time frames, what has been the, uh, the average monthly and yearly return on, um, the, uh, on the stock market if, you're, if, the, if the S &P, we're using S&P 500 as a uh, proxy for the stock market. Uh, and that gives us these numbers right here. Now, um, uh, there you go. Thanks for watching.